All right, so hopefully folks can see my screen here. I've got my trusty uh, WordPress demo site running with the very bleeding edge of Civi CRM, um, including uh, some code that was just merged last night, some code that was just merged this morning, and some code that is hopefully about to be merged before we branch, and this becomes the beta. So this week, 5.37, you can see right now it's in alpha. It will be um, beta. All right. All right. I think more people will be coming, but let's just get started. So. Um, the two new extensions that I'm demoing, um, I've done a couple demos before, but just a quick recap. Um, they are called uh, Form Builder and Search Kit, and they're both bundled in the CiviStream core distribution now. Um, so they're bundled, they're disabled by default, but you can turn them on um, by going over to your um, administer um, system settings extensions and turn on Form Builder and uh, search kit. And once you do that, uh, then you'll have a new menu item here, search kit, uh, new menu item here, administer, customize data and screens, form builder. Maybe we'll find better places for them, but um, quick tip, you can find anything in the menu just by typing there. So if you're looking for a search kit, there it is. Oops. There it is. Okay, so let's go there first. And I just want to show off some of the new stuff that I said has just been merged. Um, and you'll see a few new things along the way, too. Let's create a new search. And um, for this search, let's, uh, let's do a search for related contacts. So um, this is one of the more complex things to do in a query, but it's not too hard to do now with SearchKit. So, uh, related contacts, and let's just say any relationship. So let's, we could specify um, it's either a child or parent or spouse or other things, but I'm just going to take this out and say any, any relationship. And so I'm going to then um, add a few other things. Um, These joins can get really complicated, but notice that I'm as I'm picking a new entity to add with, I'm so I'm scrolling down to related contacts because I want to pick something that's related to the related contact. Specifically, I'm going to pick their email. Okay, so now we've got their display name and their email. Um, I'm going to also add. Um, the relation. Since I said I could do any, um, there we go, relationship to that contact. And so now I've got that search and I can run it and get contact and their relation um, and hopefully their email address if they have one. Okay. I'm going to say that the relation is required, that we don't really care otherwise. And now I'm going to create a, um, a table display. And the display is something that you can show. Um, in various places, and I have a specific place in mind that's new. Um, so I'm going to call this uh, um, all right. And for this display, I'm going to say that I don't care about the contact itself. I care about the relations. 
So I'm going to give short column headers here, name, email, and relationship. OK. And now, I'm going to place this somewhere. So in order to place a search display someplace on the website, this is where Form Builder comes in. So let me go back to Search Kit. This is all saved. Um, and the cool thing about Form Builder is that you can embed a search display in the form, and then you can embed that form in a lot of different places in your website. So we haven't created a form yet. Let's create one for this related contacts display. So this is the table that I made embedded in the form. I could go back and edit that save search. I could also add some filters. Um, so um, so I could say, you know, that I want to search by display name with the related contact. Okay. Here's the cool thing. I'm going to stick this form on the contact summary page as a block. And now, here's my contact summary screen. There are all the, relation, the relatives of this contact. So I'm viewing Betty Bachman, and I created this um, right here. This is, the, this is the search display that I created. All right, so if I'm looking for relatives whose name starts with Clint, there it is. Um, I have my search filter is working. I have a pager that I created. Um, so if there was a ton of, rel of relatives, it would um, page. And I could create some more things. I could um, add some links here to view, edit that contact. Let me just do that real quick. Um, go back to edit this search display. Let's just add some links. Um, how about as a menu? Menus are cool. And it's really contact to the related contact that I care about. I'm going to get rid of these links. And there we go. So this is another new feature that you might not have seen, is the ability to create a menu or a set of links um, right here in your table. Let's check that out. OK, so we could style it differently. But right now we've got view, edit, and delete that related contact right here in this, um, in this display. Click here, and here we are over on Clint's contact screen. And we've got now a list of his relationships and, again, actions that can take us over to, um, to those relatives. So I think that's pretty cool. I'm really happy with this new feature. Um, and one little piece of icing on the cake, you notice that this, uh, this block is just sort of plopped here on the contact summary screen. Um, and um, what if we wanted to put it somewhere else? Where? Well, there's a extension for that called the Contact Layout Editor, which would let you um, take any blocks that you've created in um, Form Builder and Search Kit and arrange them however you want. Okay, I'm going to take a minute for questions because I see there's some in the chat.
Okay, so question from Guy in the chat. Uh, again, that's on the right if anybody wants to add their questions. Um, just click on the little speech bubble icon. So what's the target audience for this tool set? Um, the idea that I've had in mind is that this tool, sorry, um, this tool, the this uh, sort of very open-ended search query builder that you can use to create a ton of different types of searches with, and you need to kind of know something about the schema and you need to know something about the database to use this because otherwise these drop-down lists are just overwhelming. That, I imagine, is going to be for advanced users or, um, you know, professional Civi CRM integrators. Um, consultants, and maybe consultants can teach advanced users to use it. But with this tool, you can create search displays that have exposed filters, potentially lots of exposed filters, and you could, for example, recreate something like a custom search. You could recreate something like the advanced search screen, but more focused, um, not so sprawling. Um, and that could be for everyday users. So that's, that's the, the targets that I've had in my mind. Cool. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and feel free, other folks, to jump in with, uh, with other questions, or I'll move on to another little uh, demoing another little thing. Um, Actions were disabled when searching. Search was grouped with email address rather than contact ID. Um, so let me just make one distinction um, between uh, actions and links. So actions, let me go back to the compose search and the search. Okay, so actions are these things where you can select a row in the table. This is going to be a little weird because there's duplicate, duplicate contacts. Um, and you can <clears throat> do an action like you can do from advanced search. <clears throat> and you can make this available on a search display um, the, of type table. There's other types of search displays. Um, there's list and there's more coming down the pipe. Um, so that's actions. And then there's links. And what I did on my little demo here is I added links. I'm sorry it's confusing because the, the drop-down button says actions. <laughs> um, I could rename it, and that would be a little clearer for the sake of this demo. Um, but these links, um, there's no limit to what you can do. And let me just show you how to create a custom link. So back to my search display. Okay. So I have this set of links that I created, and it says add. And here's some predefined links that it just knows about from the schema. Um, but there's also this other dropdown. And so if you're doing other, you can say, well, what's the icon that I want this link to represent as? Um, what's the text of the link, and then what's the URL of the link. And in this URL, you can add some tokens, such as um, basically any field that you've exposed in the as a search column. So you could create a search column um, in the main search. Notice that I'm editing a search display here, not the main search. So I could add a column in the main search, not show it in the display, but just use it as a token here to construct my link. So, you know, Siri Serum, go. Here, um, question mark, CID equals contact ID. So that, that could go uh, pretty much anywhere, uh, including to an action. Um, so it's starting to blur the lines because this is basically what those actions are, is that they're um, pop-ups that go to a specific link that um, passes the IDs of the contacts that have been selected. So, you know, for some additional crossover, I guess, you could put those, some of those actions here um, in that links menu that we've created. There. Let's call it links. Okay. Let me make the button 
them even smaller lengths. So um, style there. Let's make it a green button. Let's give it a, um, a checky icon. Okay, and just save that just to just to show that off. Um, the bootstrap style is not the best here. Some of the colors are weird. But okay, so there's my link. It's not going to actually work because um, go here isn't a real address. But um, but yes, if we wanted this to be um, to the export screen, yes, that would work. You could link to that export screen right from here. Um, thanks, Rich. I like the menu builder too. Um, I think it's it's potentially very powerful and. Um, because, as I said, actions are also links, um, I could, you know, I, I've been toying with the idea of putting more stuff in here. Um, so not just the view, edit, delete, delete links that are sort of standard for every entity, um, but also, you know, whatever actions are available could be in here as well. So you can choose from them and not have to memorize the URL. Um, um, question was, does the search display work with the export permissions extension? So when you go to the export action from search, um, so export contacts right here, um, not sure why that didn't work. Um, let's just pick one. Might be about the weird uh, multiples. Okay, I don't know. Um, I'll look into that after the presentation. It was working before. But when you go to that export, that's the core export. So anything that the extension is doing with the core export should work fine um, for the search display export as well. Yes. Yes, Rich, that's exactly, yes, that's what I was talking about. So you can create a link and that's what these actions are. These are like old style quick form actions. Um, you know, like create a PDF for these selected contacts. This screen should look very familiar to people that have used, um, you know, the classic Civi stuff. Um, and this is, like I said, just a just a link um, that open in a pop up, and we can do that too. Um, in fact, um, back to that little menu builder. Um, the, uh, oh yes, right, open. I, I skipped over this. So for the like delete contact, which is reasonable to open in a pop-up dialog, you can do it like this. You could say um, view and edit should be in a new tab because they really don't work well in pop-ups. Um, and this, you know, go here, we could call it, I, I haven't memorized the URL, but it's something like CiviCRM contact export CID equals and then the IDs, something like that. So just to give you an idea that we can put these actions in here as well. Um, can save that and we're back to our contact summary screen with this links and um, so if we want to delete this contact right from here, it would open in a pop-up because we just said open it in a pop-up. Okay, let me take another question here. So the question is about documentation, and yes, documentation is very much needed. The software is still new, still very, um, still in rapid development. You know, every Every release of Civi, and I'm showing you an unreleased version of Civi right now, has new stuff in it um, that needs documentation. Um, okay, let's do another search. I'm going to do create a new search here. Um, let's search for um, activities. Why not? Um, and let's add contacts where the contact is the 
target. That's civvy speak for the person that's actually involved in the activity, um, not the person that created the activity or the staff member who was assigned to the activity. Um, and um, the activity subject, um, surely we can expose some more fields here, status, um, activity, um, activity date. Let's just add some of this stuff. Check our search here. Okay, cool. Oh, what about type? That kind of matters. All right, so we've got our search. Um, let's create a search display. Activities and let's um, so let's say we don't really need to show the ID subject um, display name uh, let's call them the contact um, let's put them up here actually I don't think we need that column for this search um, activity status date type okay I think that's going to work um, let's uh, let's allow all these things to be edited in place. I haven't shown that off, and that's kind of cool. Okay. And um, let's save that. And again, we're going to go back to search kit. We've just created this activity search. Uh, it doesn't have any forms yet. Let's add a form so we can embed it somewhere. And Let's add some exposed filters. Activity type. Uh, activity date. Okay. Um, this is a cool one, the date filter. I was just working on this, um, and I'm really excited to show this off. Hope it works. This is all very beta. Um, okay. That's good for now. All right. And this time we're going to add it to the contact summary page as a tab. Hope it works. Okay, let's go back to Clint here. He has some activities I see in the core tab. We're going to refresh the page now. Okay. So here is our new activity tab, um, and notice that it this is the one that this is the one that uh, comes with Civi Serum. This is the one we just created over here, and um, notice that it already has the counter populated. Um, so activity types looks like he only has one type. So. Um, Oops, activity type would be tell a friend, otherwise it's not going to show any results. Um, and now activity date. So right now it's going to let you pick a date range. So you could say, um, you know, if, it, if the low value is this month, this year, it's not going to show any results because they're all happening before that. But what if we just chose a relative date? like? Um, previous calendar year. I think that works. Um, and then it, it hides those, those date fields. Yes, it's all working. Um, the sample data isn't very useful because it's only one type of activity, but we could, we could fine tune this date range search and you'd see that it's working. So, um, uh, like previous calendar month would show no results. I don't know if I can get one that's just going to pick some of them, but you get the idea. Um, we've got filters that can actually say more than one type of activity could be coming back in the search, and um, oh, that's what I was going to show off because I, I added that. Um, I said uh, edit in place, 
so okay so now we've just changed the subject of that activity um, we could also change the status to back to scheduled and we could change the date or the type uh, that's that's dangerous I don't know if I would say uh, <laughs> expose this normally but I did it it works um, and now if we just wanted to show activities of type meeting that's the only one that's going to show in this search um, but uh, yeah now we've just created a tab on the contact summary screen that shows um, and this is all sort of magically happening behind the scenes it's filtering automatically just for this contact um, activities it's not showing every activity in the database and it's letting you um, sort them you, know, you can click the headers to sort um, again we could add some links on the right here if we wanted to we could build that that little link builder um, for whatever we want to do with them we can edit them right in place um, we can also make them you know make them links uh, make instead of having these fields be added in place we could turn them into links that's another option um, but yeah I think this is a pretty uh, pretty cool and useful thing and I'm hoping that you know basically this this replaces all the functionality that most of these core tabs have some of them have some extra little niceties that have been added over the years but for the most part if it's just a if it's just a tab that shows a bunch of a table with a bunch of rows some filters up top and some links on the right we can do all of that now with search kit and we could start replacing these um, contact summary tabs with search kit displays which are much more um, configurable and I'm hoping that where this is going is that Civi CRM will start um, getting rid of some of these core tabs and replacing them with search display based tabs out of the box so that when you download Civi CRM these tabs are still there but they're not you know hard-coded they're, they're um, search displays that we packaged and shipped with Civi CRM um, and that lets you do anything you want with them. There's been a lot of requests over the years for moving different columns around, adding new columns to um, to the to the various tabs. Now you can you can add any columns you want here um, and have them uh, do anything you want, including uh, I've I sort of glossed over this, but it's worth um, it's worth looking at again. Because I think this is because um, I think this is new since I did a presentation before in this display. Um, so I added in place edit, um, which for some things makes sense, and for things like activity type, I don't recommend. Um, but there's also this rewrite feature, um, which uh, lets you well let's you change the output of the column to whatever you want and I think people that have used Drupal views um, know that they can rewrite um, you know rewrite stuff so you could combine uh, two fields or you could add some extra text to the fields um, you know you could do something silly like that or you could do something more powerful that combines multiple columns into um, the same column just to get just to just to approximate more what you're looking for, what kind of table you want to create. So there's the silly thing that I did. Type is tell a friend, um, but you can do something else. Um, and you could also turn this um, this column into a link. Say that uh, clicking the clicking on the activity type. We could maybe pick something else to click on, but whatever. And let's put this first um, to make it make more sense there. Mm -hmm. Save that and go back to our friend Clint here. And now um, it's hard to tell because of this theme, but that is a link. Um, and if you click on it, 
going to be taken to um, taken to the meeting. Cool. So let me take let me stop for a minute and take some time for questions. People are also um, let me just open it up for questions right now so people can uh, unmute themselves if they want to ask one. Um, question was sorting activities by type. Well, you can, you know, click on the on the header right here and, and sort them like that. And actually, um, another, another thing to know is that um, not only can you click sort these headers, but you can also set this behind the scenes. So in my, I also glossed over this, but it's new. Um, in the search display, when we're editing the display, we can say how we want the results to be sorted by default when you, uh, when you open up that display. Does that answer your question, John? Uh, it's a partial answer, but uh, I'm referring to, you know, if you wanted to have like a subheader that said, act, you know, meetings and then have the meetings listed under that and a subheader that said phone calls and phone calls listed under that. Uh, it's more of a display option than it is a... Uh, I see. Yeah, Views does something like that. Um, where as do you... some CIVI reports. As does CIVI reports. Okay, so no, not yet, um, but that sounds like a useful thing to add. I imagine the follow-on request from that, which I'm not requesting, is the ability to do subtotals by, uh, by whatever you're grouping by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a SQL type grouping, it's more of a display type grouping. Yeah, um, well, it, it, I think it maps somewhat to the with rollup option in MySQL, and uh, MSQL has something a little bit more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. We'll have to uh, we'll have to investigate that. Any other questions at this point? Happy to happy to dialogue more before I jump into the next demo. Wonder if wonder if Margaret has a better set of activities. No. Uh, sample data is terrible. So Aiden's asking, can can we package these things in extensions? Um, yes. Um, so search displays and um, Afforms are different types of entities. Afforms are stored as files, and so those are very easy to package as extensions. Uh, in extensions because you can just drop the file into the extension and there you packaged it. Um, the search displays are stored in the database and obviously you need both in order to package something like this tab here. You would need to package the search display and then you would need to package the app form that um, it's embedded in that subsequently gets, you know, that has the little flag on it that says this should be a contact summary tab. So I would probably use Hook Civi Serum Managed for that because that, again, would let you package it as a file. Um, so, so in an extension, you can create a JSON file that describes some sort of managed entity, um, and then that, uh, that JSON file gets translated when the extension is enabled into dumping that data into the database. Um, so. That would work, and hopefully um, we can create some, uh, like a GUI tool for exporting and packaging these things together so it's not so cumbersome. Um, but it's not too bad right now. If you, if, you, uh, if you go to the API Explorer, for instance, um, and let's just look at that real quick. And you looked at... Um, Search display, get. So this is the thing that I just created for my first demo, related contacts, and it's got the um, the columns. Um, it's also it's also going off of a saved search ID. So uh, yeah, you need to package that as well. <laughs> um, 
But so that's actually three things you would need to package just to get that one, um, just to get that one tab. Um, but again, it's not too hard. You could even do it in the same file. So you could do a file that contains, you could just like copy and paste this bit of JSON into the file and you'd have your, um, your search display packaged. And then you could also grab the JSON from the saved search, which would be this. Um, and that would, that would be the saved search. And then you'd grab the file from the app form and that would stick it in your extension. So a little cumbersome right now, but um, definitely a bridge that we're going to be crossing soon if we move in the direction I was just talking about of having core, those contact summary tabs in core being replaced by packaged search displays, which I really want. And so since I'm motivated to do it um, because I think it's um, cool and good for, you know, good for folks that are trying to customize Civi CRM, um, we will find a way to make it more convenient. Any other questions? So my next demo, I'm waiting for somebody to ask one. Um, so this is back to the form builder page. Um, and I, it kind of, I've been kind of skipping back and forth between this screen, um, the form builder and um, the, uh, and this screen search kit, which both look pretty darn similar, um, but they're actually different extensions. And you can enable one without enabling the other. Um, and then you just, this this little column here would be missing if Afform was not enabled, um, if you have just search kit. And similarly, um, in Afform, this tab would be missing if you don't enable search kit as well. But they work well together. Um, these are the two search displays that we just created for the demo, the activity tab and the relationship block. Um, I'm going to create a custom form now. And just show some of the other drag and drop stuff. So for the other forms that I showed you were intended to be for search filter, search filters. And they had a, they had a big old um, search display sort of grayed out and embedded right here. Let's just take a look at um, you know, something more simple where you say want to just create a contact um, in a form. And so we've got individual one on the form here. Um, we've got their name, their name, first, middle, and last name. Um, and that's a, we keep using the word block a lot, but um, so app forms themselves are considered to be blocks, which means that you can take it in an app form and drag it into another app form and embed it uh, along with dragging a search display into it as we did before. Um, so this email block right here is itself an app form and you can edit it as such. Um, but let's just um, drop it right in here. I'm going to drop it there into the individual field set, but not into the first and last name block. Okay. So now we've got two blocks in here, the individual name and the email, and it can get crazy complicated um, with all of the customizations you can do. You can um, say that the location type is something that you want to uh, customize the options for. Um, you can add pre and post help text on all of these fields. You can change their labels, change the placeholder. Um, you can change what the submit button says. Let's change it to save. Um, but for the moment, I'm just going to leave this form kind of simple because I just wanted to show one more context. Um, I, in the last demo, I showed how you can just click this box and it becomes a um, it becomes on the home dashboard um, a form that you can a form or a search display within a form that you can drag in from a dashlet. Um, so I won't show that again, but I do want to show since I'm using a WordPress demo here um, that I can go back to um, my posts, um, add a new one. Click on the Civi Serum embed, and 
there's a new option if you have uh, Form Builder enabled called Creatively Form Builder. And from there, you can pick uh, one of these forms that we just created. So um, these two don't make a whole lot of sense to embed in a short code uh, relationship block and activity tab, but this create a contact, I'm just going to stick it in here. Um, and take a look at my post. And there it is. So I've created an app form and now um, this is a PR that hasn't even been merged yet, but it will soon. Um, I think Kevin's taking a look at it today um, or sometime this week, hopefully by, by the time we uh, get this beta out. You can now take your form, which could contain an embedded search display um, and um, all of the stuff from the app form should work on the front end um, of your WordPress site, including um, so if you want to sign up your contacts, sign up your users for your mailing list, um, they can enter their name. You can obviously make this different. They can enter one or more email addresses. Um, this this uh, ability to add more than one email, I think, is really cool from a, a database like parity perspective. That's something that I don't think any of the other form integrations have where you can just um, spawn a new entity based on um, the fact that it's a multi-relationship multi in the CVCRM database. Um, but it's optional. You don't have to, you know, on, on a sign up for our newsletter form, this, you could just not have this button in that form. And they could just enter their one email address. And you could hard code this type and not have them have to select any of this weird stuff. Um, but it's there if you want it on your form. So I just thought I'd show that off because that's that's the newest um, thing that I just pushed up, and I think it's cool to have more front-end integration with um, the website. Um, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to do such a the similar thing with Drupal blocks, um, for instance, for the Drupal um, for the Drupal CMS. Any other questions, folks? With roll up, I see that John. I'll, I'll check that out. So, in terms of our roadmap, um, one thing that's missing from uh, this uh, save search thing, and you can, you know, definitely have a play with it. You can see that just about every entity in the database is exposed, including, um, I think I might not have the case entity, um, I might not have cases, uh, yeah, I don't have it in, enabled, but say the case was just recently added, um, just, just in this past week as a, as a search option. So that is there now. Um, and you can do, so you can do searches for just about anything, um, events and contributions and cases and activities. Um, you can join by just about anything. One thing that's missing is groups, um, just because of the um, the complexity of smart groups. Um, but we just obtained some funding um, for getting that in, thanks to Wikimedia Foundation. And so we're going to be doing that next. Hopefully, it should be in the next release cycle, I would think. Um, so this this release is going out this week, um, and so everything that I'm showing you is going to go into the beta for this week, uh, into the beta this week, and so a month from now. Um, I expect the um, search by group will also be in the beta. Okay, there's a question about backporting, um, and I would say not easily. Um, depending on what version you're trying to backport to, obviously the more versions you're trying to jump down, um, the worse it's going to be for you. Um, because as SearchKit matures, it's also generating patches that go into core, um, like for example, for instance, um, uh, I'm just going to enable it. Um, enable the CV. So the CV case, um, the ability to search in CV case, that was basically all done with a core patch by adding those um, entities to our uh, API v4. 
Um, so if you wanted to backport that, you would need to do that, which I think Matthew Lefty actually just did um, for one of his clients. So it's possible. Um, I think he said it was like five or six patches that he had to apply. Um, so yeah, there it is now, cases. Um, so backporting into 5.35, let's see what, we're on 5.37. Um, so yeah, it would be a fair number of patches. Um, it would be a fair number of patches. I would say, um, you know, it would, it would probably consume a bit of work because you'd have to look through um, all of the recent PRs that have been for a search kit and you'd have to basically just apply all those patches um, manually, which would probably apply. Can't guarantee it, but probably. Um, obviously, this is all, you know, very, very, you know, edge of the development brand, uh, you know, tip of development um, kind of stuff. And I know that that's frustrating because it's not, um, it's not in a stable release yet. Um, SearchKit is in a stable release, but not everything that I've just shown off is, um, is there. So it would be, you know, in 5.35, you're going to be missing a bunch of the stuff that I just showed, including the ability to go into contact summary tabs and, um, and the link builder and uh, stuff like that. Um, so Rich has asked a question, can we search for contacts but those that are targets for activity with a certain activity type? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, so with so search for contacts required activity. Um, there's also this new feature also in the beta called without. So you could do a search for contacts who do not have um, that activity. So that's that's pretty cool. But um, the question was, can we search for contacts that do have that activity? And yes, we could say that they were on, we're going to search for contacts only contacts that have that are um, targets of activity type. Um, whatever you want, meeting or multiple um, is you know is one of meeting or phone call. Um, so yeah, and the without inspired the without feature was inspired by doing some sort of last year but not this year search. Um, so if you want to find contacts who um, do have contributions um, in the in a certain date range but do not have contributions in a certain date range. You can add those two joins together here. We could say find contacts with contributions um, you know, required to have this contribution, but do not have but do not have a second contribution um, in a certain other date range. So that's cool, and I'm, I'm sure there's lots of other applications for it as well. So I'm really proud of all the new stuff that we've added. Obviously, there's more to do. There's more work to do always. Um, but I'm really happy with the way that it's progressing. Um, another, you know, another roadmap um, item would be just making form builder more robust, um, having more types of entities that you can um, drag onto the form, um, having more features such as somebody just asked about redirection. Yes, we definitely do want that, the ability to um, have multi-step forms, multi-page forms. There's no real technical reason why we can't have that. We just haven't added it to um, the SKUI yet. So. There's more to do. Um, um, uh, I think the future is bright for this uh, for these projects, though, and I think that uh, I'm especially excited about the ability for these projects to replace some old hard-coded forms, pages, blocks, and tabs in core, so that you can have those contact summary tabs be replaced by search displays. Have some of the core forms, like you know, create a new activity form, create a new contribution form, all of those core forms that are, are hard-coded to be actually just packaged um, form builder forms. So that's really, you know, when I, when I look at sort of, when I sort of mentally roadmap or if I just 
I'm sitting down at the computer. I'm like, oh, what am I going to what am I going to work on today? Um, often I'll just think about some of the core forms that we have. Some of the um, you know that's why that's why I added this um, uh, you know the ability to build all those links in the in a table column um, because I was looking at some of the existing tabs on the contact summary screen and thinking, well, how how can we how can we get feature parity with that? Um, so getting feature parity with some things that are in core um, so that we can then get rid of those things that are in core um, is, is something that I have my eyes on. Happy to take any final questions. Feel free to unmute yourself and just ask if you'd like to. Hey, Colin, just a uh, question. So if we were to so create a, um, a search thing for memberships, does that automatically hook into the things like um, that the membership component is enabled? Uh, does it automatically hook into the permissioning side of things that, that users have access to the memberships? Yes, and permissions is something that we've been working on too. I didn't really add that to the demo because it's a sort of a, it's difficult to demonstrate, but um, so uh, permissions are something that um, are checked at the API level and the components, whether or not the components are enabled is also something that's checked. Um, so the short answer is yes, the long answer is a little bit more complicated because there's different ways to configure the permissions for a form uh, and for a search display. So we could say for example, being able to access this form, what permission do you need? And then the next question would be, okay, in order to be able to see the results of the search display, what permissions do you need? And you can configure that. That's actually on our very short-term roadmap is being able to say in for this search display, and we've done a lot of work on this already, should this search display be something that is publicly available and therefore overrides the permissions that are normally checked? Or is this going to do normal permissions? Right now it does normal permissions um, based on the user's access level. But um, the ability to override it so that we can have, for instance, public directories or public listings that we want on the front end of the website is something that's going to, that's, uh, that we're working on right now. Um, question is, can you hook into um, app forms. So yes, um, and there are hooks that are available and because the canonical form of an app form is HTML markup and you can see that right here. Um, so this is the app form. This is the way that it's stored on disk. Um, everything that you're seeing in the drag and drop editor is tweaking this HTML. That's That's how it's that's what it's actually doing. It's, it's adding tags and adding... Um, the reason that this form is... that this HTML is so short is because it's actually embedded other app forms. So you can see this uh, AF block name individual. <clears throat> That's another app form. And we could drill down into that and the, the editor is, is pulling that in and showing you what that looks like. But that's actually not in the form. Anyway, I digress. Um, so this canonical form of the app form, when it's rendered, um, a hook is called that lets you, that um, uses um, PHP query, which is a PHP like a PHP like version of jQuery. And so you can go in and you can, with PHP query in that hook, say I want to um, grab uh, this this tag and I want to change it to something else, or I want to um, with the search display, for instance, the way that you would do that is um, in your code, um, you would say, and, uh, you know, I'm going to grab this tag, which is the embedded search display, and I'm going to add, see this filter right here? 
I'm going to add to this filter um, and you know stick in my own um, value for contact ID. So I, I hope that answers your question. It's a little different from the way that you've used hooks before probably because of the fact that app forms are markup and so you just have to get used to the idea of doing it uh, with PHP query and um, and changing the attributes of different elements on the form. But yes, it can be done. All right, folks, any last questions? Hey, Coleman, it's Guy. I, I just want to say, I mean, looking out as far as looking at implications beyond the technical and looking at implications, I mean, it, it, it's interesting to me that it's the, the ability for customization that you're building in, you could not only thinking about an individual client and tailoring it, but as providers, we, we could almost start for developing versions of Civi or presenting versions of Civi that are tailored to a specific vertical um, based on the on the way that you can really customize this and you still have Civi as the core, but you're providing a can almost provide a customized product for a for a specific vertical and go after, you know, go after a vertical. I think you're absolutely right. Um, you know, the end result of this could be not just tailoring it for a client, like you said, but um, having distributions of Civi CRM, you know, Civi CRM for schools, Civi CRM for, um, you know, for fundraising, Civi CRM for NGOs, um, all kinds of different, um, all kinds of, and, and some, some uh, you know, service providers do specialize in particular um, in particular verticals, like you said, and have, you know, have tailored, you know, have some, some extensions or some customizations that they, you know, roll out for all their clients uh, because, because of that. Because this is done through the interface and not through writing a bunch of custom, through writing custom code, it becomes easier to maintain mm -hmm. in the long run. It's really impressive. Thank you very much. I agree. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to having some of this stuff start being used in the wild. You know, just a few months ago, it was all um, very alpha, and just I was just showing off some some initial um, sort of prototype stuff, and now it feels like it's it's more ready to use. Um, it's it's I think it's very close to being um, you know something that we recommend people to use. Well, thanks everybody, and uh, be sure to join me on the um, online chats. Um, we've got um, we've got uh, the app form. Let me show those in here. Um, so we've got the app form channel. We've got the search improvements channel um, that are all um, open, and uh, you know. Please feel free to uh, to come drop in and uh, ask a question, make a suggestion. Um, looking forward to talking to you all more. Well, if you're starving, you have to eat. Can you wait a few minutes? Yes. All right. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you later.